Welcome to our lecture online. Before we use the PV diagram in the various thermodynamic processes, which we're going to look at in just a few videos from now, let's take a look at the PV diagram all by itself and try to figure out what it actually means and what it represents. And before we're going to do that, let's look at an equation we should all be familiar with from our algebra class. The equation where we have y equals 1 over x, and if we were to graph that, in the first quadrant of the xy plane, we see a curve that looks like this. So most of us remember that y equals 1 over x looks like that. You plug in a certain value for x, you get a particular value for y. And when you put all those dots together, you get a line that looks like that. Now if we take the same equation and we multiply the right side by some constant, then depending upon what the value of the constant is, we get a similar curve, but where it's located depends on the value of that constant. So for one constant, let's say C1, the curve will be over here. For a different constant, it will be over here. Another constant again will be over here. So for every other constant, there will be a, a similar looking curve, but in a different location. So now, let's go back to our ideal gas equation, PV equals nRT, and let's move the V over like this, and let's let, let t be a constant, so that nRT is a constant value. And now we see that we have two variables, the pressure, P, and the volume, V, and our nRT is a constant. And now this equation looks exactly the same as this equation. So we would expect to see an exact same curve, but on the vertical axis we get P for pressure, and on the horizontal axis we get V for volume, as is indicated over here. And again, we have that peculiar curve that belongs to y equals 1 over x, but now it will be p equals 1 over v. But then, depending upon what the value of t is, this constant nRT, because remember, n, the number of moles, will remain constant, and r is our gas constant. But for particular values for temperature, for t, we're going to get a particular curve, just like we did before with a different constant c. And so what we're going to see then is that for a particular temperature, given a volume, we can find the associated pressure. So if the volume happens to be this one right here, that will be associated with the pressure over here. If the volume is over here, this much, then the pressure will be this much. So you can see that once you have the curve set up for a particular temperature, given a volume, you get the pressure. Given a pressure, you get the volume. So there's that continuous relationship, and that comes out of our ideal gas equation. So if you ever hear the term PV diagram, that's exactly what they're talking about. It's a relationship between the pressure and the volume of a gas for a particular temperature. And now that we know that, we're going to use that for the various thermodynamic processes, even for those where the temperature doesn't remain constant. But we'll get to that in a later video. And that is how it's done.